Oh, hello. Today's lesson is binary subtraction. All right, well, I don't think anyone else will be joining us, maybe some, a little bit of the way through. So let me just talk about a couple of things that have come up in questions uh, from people throughout the last half an hour or so. Uh, and also, uh, and also other things that we're going to be doing. I'm just going to mute other people uh, so I'm not getting background noise, but make sure if you do want to ask a question, you can um, unmute yourself and, and ask a question. All right, so the first question that uh, has been a common, a couple of people have asked it over the last half an hour in here, has just been, what what do you do with positive numbers? Uh, but also, what do you do if a number doesn't take 8 bits? So, for example, if you're asked to write down, what is 17 in 8-bit 2's complement? We know that 17 is a 1 and a 16. So that's how we'd normally write 17 in unsigned binary. But in this case, we're asked for it in 8-bit 2's complement. Now, because it's a positive number, we're not asked for negative 17. I don't actually have to do any conversion with 2's complement at all. And so I'm more than happy to just leave the answer as 10001. That is 16. Sorry, that is 17, a positive 17. And we can ignore the, the whole 2's complement bit. But we haven't got 8-bit yet. And so any time a question says, give the answer in 8 bits, you need to put in some leading zeros to make sure that we get to 8 bits. So a better answer for this is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So yes, we're now doing 8 bits. We're doing 2's complement, but because it's a positive number, we can ignore that response. It's important to note that when people say using an 8-bit 2's complement system, they're not saying that a number must be negative, and they're not saying that you have to convert anything tricky. They're basically saying that if you're using a 2's complement system, negative numbers are represented in this tricky way and positive numbers are represented just normally. So make sure that you could quite easily get a question that's asking you to represent a positive number in 2's complement and you don't have to change anything. All right. In the video, in the last video, I said that one of the main uses, one of the, the really powerful things about 2's complement, I'm saving for a secret surprise. We'll cover that next lesson. Um, this, this is that secret surprise. So you're getting an extra sneak peek into what our secret surprise is, which is how useful 2's complement is. Um, and so far, we've talked about binary addition. If we want to talk about how I do something like 13 plus 7 in binary, we know that 13 is... Uh, 1101, one, uh, that's an 8 and a 4 and a 1, and we know that 7 is 111, one, one. and so I can do this binary addition by saying 1, one plus 1 is 1, 0, put down the 0, carry the 1, 1 plus 1 is 1, 0, put down the 0, carry the 1, 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 1, 1, put down the 1, carry the 1, 1 plus 1 is 1, 0, so we get this answer, which is a 16. Uh, plus a 4, which gives me an answer of 20. And sure enough, 13 plus 7 is 20. Now, we've seen that binary addition before. We should be reasonably comfortable with that. What about if I ask you to do 13 take 7? Now, in primary school, if we're doing 13 take 7, we have to go 3 take 7. Oh, I can't do that, so I have to borrow. So I'm going to borrow from there and now do 13 take 7. And that gives me 6. Um, and over here, I've got zero take zero, so that gives me zero. That's nice and easy. That gets pretty tricky with binary if we're going to do something similar because borrowing only works if there's a one in the previous column and we shift it across. It gets a little bit nasty. So essentially, we're not going to do any of that subtraction. What we're actually going to do when we're doing subtraction is turn the one that we're subtracting into a negative number through two's complement and then just add them. So we can add two numbers in two's complement, and even if they're negative, one of them's negative, it'll still just give us the right answer. It's one of the magic things about two's complement. So let's start by, first of all, working, I'm going to do this 13 and 7, but I'm going to do them as 8-bit two's complement. So 13, let's, let's talk about, we're going to do 13 take 7. So 13 is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. I know that because I just copied the last four digits from there added four zeros at the beginning. I'm going to do take seven. So I'm going to take this seven and turn this number here into eight bit two's complement as well, but it's going to be negative seven. So I'm going to, uh, I'll do it over here to start with. Seven is zero, 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 one, one, one. Let's do a two's complement on this number, starting from the right-hand side, all leading zeros become zero. Uh, sorry, all 
first zero stays zero, but a one, um, and the first one that we come across stays as a one, and then everything flips. So that gives me my negative seven in two's complement. That's what I'm going to add to 13. So 13 plus negative seven. I'm going to do this addition. One plus one gives me one zero. Put down the zero code of the one. One plus zero plus zero is one. One plus zero is one. One plus one is zero. Code of the one. One plus one is zero. Code of the one. One plus one is zero. Code of the one. One plus one is zero. Code of the one. One plus one is zero. And then this one we put there, but since we're storing it as eight bits and this is a ninth bit, we can pretty much forget about it. It just gets left off. It's important to note this is not overflow error. We're going to talk about overflow error sometime later, but this is planned and deliberate and we just lose the ninth bit. And what do we get left? What's over here? Zero, 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 one, one, zero. That's a one in the twos column and a one in the fours column, which is equal to six. What is 13 take seven? Six. So I know that you can probably do 13 take seven in your head and work out that 13 take seven is six and then convert six to binary. But the process here works for any numbers. It's the same process that's described in the textbook on page 17. Uh, it's the same process that's happening on page 17. So you can read through those and look for some other ones. It would also work if this second number was bigger. So for example, if we were doing 13 take 27, then we'd go through our whole process. We'd do 13 as a positive number, turn 27 into a negative number, and then it would, uh, and then it would end up with a number here. This number here would end up being a negative number, so it would have a one at the beginning and some other things. I'm just making them up. And then when we turn that into a two's complement, we'll get an answer of, in this case, it would be negative 14. To answer Rugen's question, what happens to that ninth bit? Um, the answer is it doesn't go anywhere. We just forget about it because we're storing everything. We're storing everything as an eight bit number. And so that assumes that we've only got eight places. We've only got eight places to store our bits. And so anything that can't fit into those eight places gets left off. It's deliberate. It's not a sign bit. It's not that we have a leading one and that means that we've got a negative number. In our 8-bit 2's complement, let's remember that this is our units column, this is our 2's, this is our 4's, this is our 8's, this is our 16's, this is our 32's, this is our 64's, this is our sign bit that tells us whether we're positive and negative. And so the 8th bit here is always our sign bit. This one here goes into a column that we don't have a name for, we don't have a classification for, and we don't actually care about at all. 